sometimes you will get them mixed up. Sometimes it will feel not as joyful as you thought pregnancy might be and early motherhood might be, but just hold those two babies on your chest or three babies across your body, you know? And the phrase that I would leave everybody with, and I know it sort of applies to all moms, but it has really helped me as a twin mom is to remember that this is a season and every season comes with things you love about that season and maybe don't, you know? We love the flowers in the spring, we hate the allergies, you know? We love the vacations yep. in the summer, we hate the heat, but yep. this is a season. Getting the news that you're pregnant is exciting in and of itself. But when the nurse says, well, there's two, as our guest today heard, it is a whole new ball game. On the show today is Kelly Morris Rowan, a twin mom and fabulous member of the well-known eight-person acapella group Voices of Liberty at Walt Disney World. She has recently returned to work after her maternity leave, but found some time to chat with us because she is determined to support and encourage other multiple mamas out there with her own experience and knowledge. A special thanks to her husband, Arthur, who watched the boys while we chatted. And if you just got the news that you are expecting twins, then this episode is for you. Here's Kelly. Take us through that first moment when you found out that you were having twins, which I'll say to the audience, uh, twins are not in your family. You did not do IVF. This was completely unexpected and unknown and all of the things. So what did that moment feel like, Kelly? (laughs) Oh my gosh. I just had, that wasn't on my radar, Jessica. It Why was, would it be? I know. And, and but the thing is, I'm a, I'm such a type A personality for anyone listening. You know, I love to prepare and plan and research and know everything I can. And I had just not even thought about twins. Um, so really what happened was we had learned we were pregnant at four weeks confirmed with the OBGYN and we were to come back at eight weeks for our first ultrasound. And luckily, this is all during the time of COVID still. So this would have been back in August of uh, 2020. So the the eight-week scan was September 2020. And we went in. And luckily, my husband was allowed to come with me because a lot of times oh, I wasn't allowed good. to bring him with me to appointments. So we were there together in our masks and in the ultrasound room. And I was laying down because there was a monitor above me so I could look at it. And he was sitting by my side holding my hand and looking at the monitor across of my body where the the ultrasound tech was. And I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm a first time mom. So I'm I'm just looking for like what I assume will look like a open uterus and some kind of little bean, you know? And so I see these little like blobs around and she's still moving and I still see some blobs, blobs, plural, keep in mind. And then she goes, um, and she says, well, and she paused. And I'll never forget it because in that pause, the two of us squeezed our hands really tightly because I'm 37, he's 41. We were, we know how fertility tends to go as you get older. We were prepared. Like I said, I prepared for a lot. We prepared for them to say, you know, I'm so sorry. You, you know, the pregnancy hasn't continued. And she said, well, there's two in there. Just that nonchalantly. And I... (laughs) As, as these words filter into my like awareness, I'm looking at my screen. I'm like, two, two what? Two, uh, two babies? And I haven't fully processed it yet. Two and what? That was my <laughs> husband leans across me and goes, wait, what? <laughs> like, just, <laughs> no, that's not, we, there were a lot of things we expected you to say. There's two in there was not one of them. And, uh, and we just both, I started shaking like, crying excited scared i don't even know like it was it was an indescribable moment that was a little exciting like seriously did we just make two babies um also oh my god we just made two babies and uh and uh, and essentially so then she said yep everything was good so head back out to the lobby we'll call you back later and and i had to ask i said do you do you mind can i just take a moment with my husband because I, I was so overwhelmed. In fact, she she like lovingly berated me the way she needed to because she had to finish the ultrasound. But I was she, my stomach was shaking so much. She's like, okay, I need you to be still. I'm like, you just gave me life changing news. I can't be still right now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's a yeah. So I don't know that there's one word for it other than uh, I, I have I mean, otherworldly or like mind blowing. Um, it wasn't 
it definitely was not a negative. It also wasn't like an immediate, oh, yes, we did. It was just a, what does this even mean? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So that, that would be my, my answer to that news. That was also the same session, though, that later they came and said, yes, you do have twins and you have monochorionic diamniotic twins. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? That sounds maybe scary. Like, I don't know why you would say that to me other than you have twins. And uh, my sweet RN, who with the OBGYN who I'd go to see, she wrote it out for me. She goes, I know you like to Google. You can Google it. Okay. (laughs) Essentially, what that means is that my twins shared a placenta. And that began my journey of... um, understanding that when you have twins, you don't just have twins. There are dichorionic or monochorionic twins. Dichorionic means two placentas. Mono means one. And then you can have diamniotic, meaning two amniotic sacs, or di- or monoamniotic, meaning one amniotic sac. I had monodi twins, one placenta, two amniotic sacs. But there are also, so there's di-di, that's your typical twins, two placentas, two amniotic sacs. Monodi, one placenta, two amniotic sacs. Mono mono twins, meaning one placenta, one amniotic sac, two babies in it. And then, of course, the, the very rare conjoined twins, which would also usually happen with a momo pregnancy. And she said, there are complications that can come from this. So you're going to have to see a high risk doctor. And so it kind of became this moment. And I feel like it's, it is part of the same story because it was only about 10 minutes after finding out we we're having twins was. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's something you, unique about this pregnancy. This It isn't just twins. It's twins with some risks. So that was kind of what started a very interesting journey for us. That's so fascinating that you point that out, Kelly, too, because we often just hear identical or, right. you know, wait, what's the other one? For, fraternal. Yeah. Identical or fraternal. Like, that's all we hear. And so to right. hear that there's, it's not only that, but then of, I think, of course, we would expect that there would be some kind of risk or some sort of extra protection because you have two babies in one belly, like that's going to cause some <laughs> challenges. But right. those that's kind of a different level that you wouldn't necessarily be expecting to hear after that news. Of course, you're excited, oh. but. Right. Well, that's exactly what it was. And it was kind of the thing I thought, oh, I, I wish more people knew about this because when I would explain it, whenever I told anybody I had twins, I'd say, and they're monochorionic diamniotic twins. And most people were like, just like I was, went, what? But a few people who said, oh, Modi, my sister had Modi twins and or Monodi sometimes they say. But so identical twins can happen in uh, any of those situations. But uh, monochorionic is a guaranteed identical twin situation because what happens is that egg splits, but the placenta has already formed. So whether or not it gets the two amniotic sacs or not, I'm not quite sure how that happens. Um, mm. But I know that they said, you know, you have, that was how we knew. We knew at week eight, we were having identical twins. And I was like, how mm. do you know so soon? And I was like, well, I have one placenta. You're welcome. <laughs> Unreal. So, and your two baby boy, boys, Atticus and Lincoln, are identical, right? They are. Yeah. Very identical. I, they're totally identical. They, uh, the, when they were first born, I could not tell them apart at all. Then they had about a week, about week three, where I was like, oh, they're totally different babies. And then the next week they grew again and I, they were the same baby again. <laughs> so, yeah, you're like, um, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Kind Where's that colored the, toenail again? Exactly. And uh, I have learned the phrase mom goggles, meaning I have now reached a point where they look very different to me. Um, and I think it's, you just, they are individuals, you know, like mm-hmm. genetically they're the same, but they're totally individuals. So I am, um, I'm in pretty grateful to just I'm learning as I go too I'm like telling Absolutely. anyone I can who wants to know about twins it's amazing. Well, clearly we're going to today just dive full into twin life. And if you've recently gotten the news and discovered that you're expecting twins, then this is the episode for you. And I think it's perfect because like I try to do here on the Mamas in Training podcast, I'm one, I'm speaking to a mama who has been there and who ha- never, I, mean, I think even, you know, IVF has its own challenges and own set of things. But I think there's another level that twins can be a possibility. And so I think that's in there is like, oh, you kind of expect it. But when you don't have twins in your family, and you're not doing any special things, you're just trying to conceive naturally, you never expect it. And so I think you know, Kelly reached out to me and we had a conversation about how important this could be because you also mentioned to me, Kelly, that everything that you research in this pregnancy world 
is designed for one baby, right? right? So what did that look like for you when when you got that news? You came home, maybe you registered it a little bit, <laughs> woke up from your dream. Right. Uh, well, I was. I wish I could remember the blog that I ended up finding at about six in the morning the next day because I could not sleep that night. I, oh, I bet. I, I fits and starts, but I finally was like, no, nope, you have to get up and have your one cup of half calf coffee and you know <laughs> yes. think about what you can what you want to do with this news. And so I just kept you know doing different internet searches for what does it mean to have twins? What should I know about having twins? You know, new mom with twins, whatever I could find, and. Um, you know, and of course, doing some research on my type of pregnancy. But I found this blog that was what told me that. It said, things I wish someone had told me when I found out I was pregnant with twins. I'm like, reading all of that. That's what know. I need. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, uh, and the biggest one was what you said is that she said, you need to know right now at the beginning of your pregnancy that everything is geared towards a singleton pregnancy. Now, I'd never even heard the phrase singleton before. And that is, she goes, now that you're a multiples mama, everyone will understand the term singleton. You know, but if you mm. just have one baby, why would you need to say, I have a singleton pregnancy? You right, just, exactly. I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And because she said that, she also had some resources to guide me there at first, which was very a helpful start. And that is that was the most helpful piece of advice we ever got. I just actually wish, wish we had continued to recognize that along the way, because that applies even to like the birthing class that we took, which don't get me wrong. You, every mama out there, absolutely. Any resource you want to go for, go for it. You know, learn as much as you want. It's never going to hurt you. Um, but I, I feel like I got a little misled on what I might expect in my birthing process at the hospital. Cause it was like, make sure you advocate for not consistent monitoring. And so I was ready to advocate for intermittent monitoring. Well, guess what? You have multiples. It's not an option. You're at the hospital, you you're monitored that. the whole time. And so I had a lot of like letdowns because I thought, oh, I know how to advocate for this. And I know what I can ask for in this way. And just sometimes the policies at a lot of hospitals when it comes to multiples are just much more stringent, much more. I'm so sorry. We will support you emotionally however we can, but it's got to be X, Y, Z. Are there birthing classes for twins? And would you, if you could do it again, would you go back and seek that out? Yes. I, so I now know there's a few more resources out there for twin pregnancies than I realized at the time. And I used the resources offered to me by my hospital, which again, were fine. But in hindsight, being 2020, they were for singleton pregnancies. There is a site out there, twiniversity.com. And it started, I think, just as a blog. I don't know the women who run it, but it's a, you know, a mom of twins who saw exactly what I'm talking about. That was like, where are all the resources? She has kind of compiled a lot. She does a weekly email blast with like twin news. There's a Facebook group with giveaways for twin products. And she also encourages, I mean, if there's any singleton moms out there who are like, I just, I'm curious to know more, like by all means, it's a great site, a great resource. I signed up. That was the most helpful email I would get each week. Cause you know, you have your, if you use baby center or any of the other baby apps, your baby is 36 weeks right. zero and the size of this. And here's an average weight, but Twiniversity will send you your twins are this many weeks. Average weight uh, of dichorionic twins is this. Average weight of monochorionic twins is this. And it was oh, so interesting. helpful. I just felt like, oh, I, now I know what's going on inside of me. Completely. I love that. You know, one of the reasons, well, there's many reasons that I am so happy to talk to you. First of all, for those listening, Kelly and I went to school together. Kelly also has a special place in my heart because my very first apartment that I was able to live in in New York City, you remember this, Kelly, was your apartment that I subletted yeah. from you for six months. I literally moved to New York without anything, like barely knowing anybody with no place to live. I stayed in a family friend's apartment for the first two weeks and then somehow got connected with Kelly who needed a sublet and it worked out perfectly. And yeah, it's kind of, I always think of the beginning of my New York journey connected to you. So I love I that. I didn't realize it was your first place. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. My very first place. So of course, I mean, we went to college together. I have that connection to you with New York. There's so many reasons why I'm happy to speak to you today and see your beautiful face. But one of the main reasons that I really want to share with everybody is that you have taken this opportunity throughout your pregnancy and then into the first few weeks being postpartum and now going back to work 
as being completely open, completely vulnerable, completely honest. You say multiple times, nothing is TMI. You mentioned things like you recently started seeing a pelvic floor therapist, which is super advocated for. We Episode 71 is all about that. You also paused your breastfeeding journey, and now you're on to formula. But you gave breastfeeding a go for a while. You talk about weight gain. You talk about hormone imbalance. You had a C-section. You mentioned that you bled for seven weeks postpartum. It's the good, the bad, the ugly. You also even mentioned that <laughs> that your Fitbit measured your first poop as a cardio event, people. <laughs> it did. It did. <laughs> That made me so laugh I, so hard. <laughs> oh my god, it's amazing! I love it. Hey, that's a workout. I tell you that it that's was. good. I had no idea. I praise you. I praise you for that. So the reason why I mention all of these things is because, like, I could sit here and talk to you for hours about all of these different elements, which I think is so important. And anybody who's listening who enjoys the episode. We'll have all the links for the website you mentioned and to connect to Kelly in the show notes, but reach out to Kelly because if you're going through any of these things, I know that she's an open book and would love to talk to you, but I wanted to really focus on on twins and that news and what that can feel like and how women can prepare. So with that being said, what would you first say? So women just had their ultrasound. They were shocked as you were. What the heck is would they do? What's their first step? I my actual first piece of advice is a book that became my life raft through my entire pregnancy. Um, it's called When You're Expecting Twins, Triplets, or Quads. It's available on Amazon. I'm sure other places too, um, but it's proven guidelines for a healthy multiple pregnancy. And it was recommended to me. I want to say about start of my second trimester um, from a twin mama who I had kind of forgotten from my past. She, she and I went to high school together and I'd forgotten she had twins. And she reached out to me because, man, once you're a twin mama, you want to find every other one you know. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and she said, this really helped me. Um, and only, and so this, that would be step one is this book because I, it, I mean, I could tell you all that goes through it, but it's definitely worth looking because the one that was the most helpful to me was it actually gives you a healthy weight gain guideline. And oh, again, yeah. By all means, throw it out the window if that's not something that serves you and your mental health. But for me, with a multiples pregnancy, no matter what your body type is going into it, you really are encouraged to gain the healthy amount of weight. You know, it's, uh, and it, it was surprising to me, even my doctors, when I said, you know, well, how much should I should I gain more weight? Should I not gain any more weight? Because no, it's the same as a singleton pregnancy, 25 to 30 pounds, you know. And I remember thinking, well, well great. But also, really? And, How? Yeah. Right. And this breaks it down. It's not just a flat number. It's based on your BMI before pregnant. So it really mm. takes into account, you know, your height, your body type, your weight. Um, it has recipes in it to help you through your pregnancy journey. Um, it oh, kind of talks awesome. about, like, it was just really a helpful, at least for me, with my type A personality of, like, tell me the things. Um, yep. I found that really helpful. And it does, it just talks about explaining different types of twin pregnancies to you. So you do learn more about what the types I mentioned. And I just felt like it, it just, I felt seen and guided through my whole pregnancy with that book. So that would be step one. And step two, if you were on social media, Facebook has some of the most, and you have to find the right one for you, but the most wonderful support groups for twin mamas. Um, oh, you know, nice. I, there are local twin mom support groups and I think that varies depending on where you are, whether it's the right fit for you or not, but just a generic, I'm in one called Modi twins on Facebook. Um, mm. but so there's several because anytime, sometimes people were posting with their four-year-old twins, but I thought I still want to read that because that's my future. Some people would right. post while exactly. pregnant saying I'm 27 weeks and I'm, I'm panicking because everything hurts and it's stretching. And I think I'm 27 weeks and it hurts too, you know? Yeah. So those would be my two suggestions or that book and to find an online support group for twin pregnancy, because it was really helpful for me. I love that idea too, specifically getting that, not only that book, but groups like that, because I'm sure that you're going to compare yourself naturally as a pregnant woman, which, you know, comparison is the thief yeah. of joy, but right. either way, we're going to do it. So yeah. you're going to compare yourself to other pregnant women, but they're, like you said, they're singletons probably. Yeah. And that was and really so hard. They're, 
yeah, their body might look different. It might look different compared at the different stages. Healthy comparison. It definitely did. And I'd encourage this for any type of pregnancy. If you have even the smallest thing that feels unique, I bet somewhere out there is a support group of women that deal with that because then no question was too small or too insignificant to ask, you know, so that was a Now, were there any point. other, yeah. Now, were there any other courses or classes that you took that were specific to twins during your pregnancy? There weren't. And I wish I had, um, Twiniversity actually that site I mentioned, I now know they have a twin breastfeeding class that I could have taken. Oh, they have, yeah. I know like just, they have, twin pregnancy birthing classes I could have taken. And I'm like, oh man, why didn't I do that? You know, mm -hmm. and hindsight, always 2020. So let's talk about those early days. I think the one thing to know about tw multiple pregnancies is that your likelihood of a C-section is just higher um, depending on doctor, delivery, baby positioning. It is not a guarantee. So if you are, if you want to try for a vaginal birth, by all means, feel empowered to do so. I would just so encourage anybody who's got a multiple pregnancy to do your research on what is involved with the C-section, both the procedure itself and the recovery. Um, because especially with Modi twins, I knew it was 70% of Modi twins are born via C-section. So I started my journey thinking I was definitely going to have one and I didn't even research it. I just made peace with the idea that I was having a C-section. And then at about the seven month mark, I thought, Oh, that sounds like a major surgery. Maybe I should look into that. And I did more research on what it is entailed and thought, yikes, well, if I have healthy positioning of babies, maybe I will try for vaginal. So then that got me to do more research on and take the classes on true like birthing class and what it means to have a vaginal delivery, which was very helpful. I mean, even though it was only for one baby, it was still helpful to learn. Yeah. Um, and then it let me be completely at peace when I, I went into the hospital for vaginal induction because both babies were head down. Um, but after being in the hospital overnight and several different ultrasounds, the radiologists didn't like the look of how they were positioned and it turned into a C-section. Um, mm. Not so much an emergency one, but not necessarily a scheduled one. It's kind of like a, we're right. so sorry, the induction isn't working. Let's go cut some babies out of you. I was like, oh, yeah, right okay. Um, yeah, exactly. So, I, but I will say, so just that is what I would encourage is just be informed of both options of birth and what can happen because it will allow you to take out that panic. I was after, especially listening to so many different moms say, I had a traumatic birth experience. My C-section was traumatic. I tore, it was traumatic. I just thought if I can do anything to prevent saying that my birth experience was traumatic, I'd like to. I know that's kind of out of my hands, but I think the educational part is in my hands. And, uh, and that's what I did. So that would be my advice. Absolutely. What did those first few days look like? What can expecting moms with twins, you know, expect? Uh, how do you prepare? What are some tips and tricks? Well, I will give the disclaimer that, again, these were my first babies. So I think that is um, another layer, too, because I didn't even know what to expect as a mom, I cared for children right. for many years in New York, but not the very beginning, you know, so I'll just put that out there because I think if you're having twins after a baby, at least you'll know a bit of how to handle those first moments in the hospital. Um, the one thing I'll tell you is it is a different animal to hear two babies crying at the same time than one. Mm. So, um, I didn't find it super upsetting, but it, it, whether you want it to be or not, it triggers a stress response. You know, even though I was a little more Zen, I know babies cry, it's going to be okay, but two at once. And, um, I would also say those first early days, especially if you have a C-section are extra difficult on your spouse or your partner. Um, because yes, I worked as hard as I could to get on my feet as soon as possible. You know, I was standing up I want to say it took me eight hours after the procedure mm. um, and walking to the sink and back, you know, within mm. nine to 10 hours. Um, but that meant no diaper changes were mine. No swaddling was mine. I was just in the hospital bed. If people brought babies to me, I held them my like, skin to skin and, and tried some breastfeeding. But you, it's just to know that you hear two babies crying and you can't move. You can't do anything. Yeah. That is a tough situation. So I will say from the, if you are, and most likely most twin births, you're in a hospital. 
they don't have to be but from a safety perspective. That was what I learned was advocated for. And so if you're in a hospital, it's, use your nurses, use them. I, I didn't know that you could call a nurse to say, can you help me with a diaper change? Because I thought, <laughs> that's not what nurses are for. They're so highly educated. They should, you know. Yeah. Honestly, but, I wouldn't think of that either. I, and I don't, and I, again, I can't speak to if that's something you should ask a nurse for when it's at one baby, but I think you still can. But Why not try? Exactly. <laughs> they can say I, no. You know, exactly right. And they, because I remember we were in the hospital for four days and three nights and in the middle of night three, and I was just bawling out of stress and my husband was stressed and. I, she, the sweet nurse we had was like, you know, you can ask me for anything. And I said, I'm so sorry. I, I just don't even know what to ask. So even if it's maybe just to encourage your nurses at every new shift change, like, please offer me information. I'm not sure what I can ask you. Um, I, I did have a doula, but Unfortunately, due to the way the C-section happened unexpectedly and quickly, she couldn't be there until after. I do advocate after what I used her for postpartum life. I think a doula is a great idea, and I wish we'd called her sooner. I thought our induction mm-hmm. was going to be 72 hours. We were going to call her later. I should have called her first. And here's an advice that I think also it applies to singletons as well. Everyone said, you know, hey, don't worry about breastfeeding. Use the lactation consultants at the hospital. They're there for you. That is true. And I met several of them, and they were all lovely people. They all had slightly different advice, which when you're new and hormones are dropping and flying and a little bit on painkillers, that was a little confusing for me as a first-time mom, you know, um, because you'll have, you know, nurses recommending a pacifier and a lactation consultant saying, don't do that. Then you'll have this nurse saying, this kind of hamburger hold of your breast is the way to go, and the other one saying, Perhaps the football hold is better. And, and the thing is, they're all right, but it was, it's, uh, it's overwhelming. Overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. So what I so much in just interviewing women is you mentioned the doula and the lactation consultant and get those set before you even give birth so that you can get those exercises in, have those conversations with your lactation consultant beforehand and then all those other people now granted sometimes it's not in your financial ability to have those people and that's completely understood but i think it's important at least if you're in that situation then to just know you're going to be given multiple you know word sides of of advice in the equation right so that's so helpful to hear right and i would also that was actually i wrote down because you always ask the question like what is something you wish you'd done while pregnant and it was just to have researched or read up a little bit on those first few days and what needed to happen. Um, Again, the other thing I was going to say in those early days, and this surprised me, um, was day two in the hospital, I got hit with what I now know are referred to as baby blues. And thing is, this applies, I know, across the board, so I won't dwell on it too much because it's not twin specific. But I was... You, we talk about postpartum depression, and I knew all about that. So every time I ever heard the phrase baby blues, I assumed it was the same thing. I assumed it was just another aspect of postpartum depression. And only after going through it, because I never once didn't like my kids. I never once looked at them and thought, I don't feel connected to you, or I'm not happy you're here. I was thrilled they were here. I couldn't. I wanted to hold them all the time. Um, but I couldn't stop crying. And then you add that layer on top of two babies, the two diaper changes need swaddling. One broke out of the swaddle. This one fell asleep, but this one's awake. This one's awake, you know, and my husband yeah. having no baby experience and battling two babies and then breastfeeding difficulties. And I'm just crying the whole time. And I thought, oh, I wish someone that that part was somehow I missed that that is also normal and it was just going to pass in about two weeks. I, if I, someone, mm. I, I learned that about halfway through that this will probably go away. And I was like, Oh, okay. Thank you. I needed to know that. So important. Okay. Let's dive in to some favorite and or necessary products for twins. What have you fell in love with? Okay. So there's a top two that, and you're going to want them right away. But like, don't wait. If you're having twins, get these products. There's a thing called the twin Z pillow. 
And essentially, it looks like a, the letter E or a W or two boppies combined, however you want to look at it. Um, but it's a soft pillow that will last them into like early toddlerhood. Um, and you can lift up the middle part to put behind your back, wrap the other two parts around you and clip it. It has a clip and it becomes a twin breastfeeding pillow. Or you can leave it on the ground or on a sofa and it becomes like essentially two boppies for your twins. And when they're little, you can clip it so that it actually supports them. It is just, we, why well, use it in the hospital? I took this as a huge pillow, but I took it with me to the hospital and I used it for twin breastfeeding, which was invaluable and um, for tandem feeding. And uh, then we brought it home and now it lives um, on the floor of the nursery in between the two cribs so that when we need to like station one baby while we're changing another one, or if they have reflux and they need to kind of lay a little upright for 15 minutes, it's right there for us to use. So twin Z pillow, the Z is just the letter Z. Uh, and then also there's a pillow, and this <laughs> cracks me up to say it every time, it's called my breast friend pillow. Yes. <laughs> so, and I know this, I think there's, they have a version that's, I think they have, might have one that's designed for one baby. This can work for one baby for sure. Um, but it is specifically, it has, it's a pillow that kind of hooks around you. It's like a tray essentially it has a little lip to keep babies on. And it made tandem feeding so easy, which it's not easy. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can imagine. And I also will say neither one has been a waste. Um, even though my breastfeeding journey, I kind of, it came to its conclusion after two months because I love that breast friend pillow now because I sit and um, I, I sit with it just under my chest level like I would when I'm breastfeeding, except now I feed them bottles and they're right near me. I still get that same mm. positioning that I would if they were breastfeeding. Yeah. I mean, I'm still looking right into their eyes and two at a time, which is a challenge. So that those are my yeah. top two, 100%. Every twin mama, they are, you know, obviously they're a little pricier, but they're not crazy. Put them on your registries, tell people about them. You know, they're invaluable. Yeah. Uh, They'll get the good usage, so it's yes. worth it. We'll put those links in the show notes too. Absolutely. Oh, and there's one more. It's a must. If you again, this was, and I can't speak to its price because it was a hand me down from another twin mama. Was the twin Wego carrier W E E G O? Um, it is. It's designed. It can start holding infants um, at four pounds each, which is so important because oh. twins are often born small. Um, and it adjusts as twins like with it has, it has a baby insert and like on in each pod they were both worn in front of you so it's only for infancy because as they get too heavy you you'd be falling over um yeah but it was the thing that on night two once we got home that the boys bless their hearts did not sleep on night one and night two we put them in that twin we go zipped it up and i was able to handle it with my c-section when they were little as they got heavier i had to you know defer mm. but um so you just essentially you're you're cocooning them right? Both against yeah. you and fully cocooning them in this beautiful fabric that's safe for them to be in. And it lets you, you know, have your hands free when, and that's with twins. It's so rare to have your hands free. <laughs> exactly. I think I saw a post that you put up about you holding them that way. And you were doing your makeup when you yes. went, you were going back to work. One of my I love first that. days back to work. I was like, how do I do this? My husband already went to work. I have to figure this out. So it was that's a lifesaver. amazing. The thing that I want to wrap up on, Kelly, is something that's kind of an interesting question and topic that came to my mind, but I'm just sure. curious to ask you, have you experienced any sort of envy or jealousy or frustration with the fact that you have to split your attention with two? And if so, would you say that there's any sort of guidance that you would give moms and how to handle that? You know, uh, that's a great question. Because my answer to that is yes, but I want to be specific as to how. Uh, I don't feel badly like the twins are not receiving the love and care they should get. You know, I feel like it's totally fine. They know they're loved. I'm attending to them as quick as I can. I, because I remind myself, like, even if it does mean one is crying more than they might if I was fully focused on that baby, we all know from just even observing other mothers, you can focus everything on one baby and sometimes they're still going to cry. Um, so I give myself some grace there. And I think that that's the biggest thing is just to any, I mean, all mamas in general, but especially to multiples mamas is give yourself grace. It's, it's hard trying to figure that out. And what I, I think what I have 
but and my husband and I have both talked about this, is for all the many blessings and exciting moments and unique moments you have with twins, like I never knew what it felt like to hold two babies at once, and now I do, is that, especially because we're first-time parents, I have no idea what it means to just care for one baby. And mm. sometimes that's a little sad to me. Like I, I had visions of motherhood and wrapping my baby in a fluffy towel after the first bath and taking pictures of perfect moments. And, you know, <laughs> and I, I, I joked with Arthur, my husband, and I said, uh, you know, instead of having this magical first bath moment with just one baby, he was holding a baby while I was bathing a baby. And then in order to towel dry off the baby, which we hadn't figured out the system yet, I laid the towel on a count on the counter to then put the baby in. So my whole focus, instead of being like magical moment was don't let the baby hit the Keurig. Don't let the baby hit the Keurig. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a twin mom moment right there. Um, and so I don't know that I have, uh, I think I think I do have envy. In fact, we we, we that that would be the one I'd say is I envy, and I know if, some, if, I, if anyone who's listening to this, if they have one baby, especially if it's a baby that's maybe kind of a difficult to learn, will kind of go, that's not true. But I say like I envy parents that just have to worry about one baby. I, I'm like, what does that feel like when that baby goes to sleep? There's no risk of the other baby waking up. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. that baby will wake up and probably still tire you out. But at least when that baby's asleep, you know, everybody's asleep. Um, yeah. So, so that part would be. Thanks for sharing that. Cause I just, I just think it's interesting to put out there for the twin moms who might be listening or the expecting twin moms who might be listening to just know that that's kind of a normal thing. And I think it's okay to know that and experience it and be honest with it because no matter what life throws at you with motherhood, it's not going to be easy, but what we need is really just honesty and truth. And I think if we can just state that, that like, yeah, I love my kids, but this kind of sucks a little bit. Yeah. It's and easier, I think, to move through and move past. And I will share this too, because I think it's important. And I didn't know that it was going to come my way was my husband about four weeks in was really struggling, which I now understand it is difficult for men to connect to babies more often. And it's difficult for some women too. It's very totally normal. Um, but biologically, it's just not the same. Like you didn't grow them. They are in fact a adorable blob you are keeping alive. Um, and so he was already struggling with that, which I did know, but I thought that that much, I was like, that's normal. He'll, he'll be fine. But what he, he said to me at one point, and this goes hand in hand with your question of the twin mom thing. He said, you know, Kelly, I, I really, I'm looking forward to the day when I can look at the nursery and, you know, look at these cribs and think, I'm so glad we have two because I don't feel that way right now. And that was, let me tell you, as a hormonal new mom, that was really hard for me to hear. Even from my partner who I want to tell me everything, you know, I kind of said, I have two truths, honey. I want you to tell me everything. And I also don't want you to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but it was, I think that resonates with a lot of twin parents out there, moms and dads, um, because in the early days, you know, I think once, once they are thriving personalities, you know, it's a totally different ball game. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're just thinking, I love my kids, I love my kids, but oh my gosh, why did I have to have two? Just know that that happens and it's going to be okay. And just get some therapy. Yes. Wait, that's where my <laughs> right. husband's in it and it's been super helpful for him. And we are doing yeah. much better now than we were in those early days. I will share this story because when it happened, I was in the midst of baby blues and it was not funny. But I remember in the moment thinking, this is funny and you should share it because you never thought about this as a twin mom. This is, goes to ad- identical twins. I was holding one of my sons in front of the changing table. We have a mirror in front of the changing table. So I'm looking at my bedraggled new mom, tired self. I've I've been crying. Baby's just finished crying and I'm bouncing him and looking in the mirror at myself and saying like, okay, it's going to be okay, buddy. It's going to be okay. Mommy's okay. You're okay. I love you. I don't know which one you are. (laughs) 
I, and of course, at the time, I then continued to just cry about that. You know, I was like, oh, I just don't know. Are you Lincoln? Are you Atticus? Are you, are you, I know you're my son. Uh, and I thought, man, that's a moment I never thought could happen in, you know, so. In life. Yeah. So you just know that sometimes you will get them mixed up. Sometimes it will feel not as joyful as you thought pregnancy might be and early motherhood might be, but just hold those two babies on your chest or three babies across your body, you know, and the phrase that I would leave everybody with, and I know it sort of applies to all moms, but it has really helped me as a twin mom is to remember that this is a season and Mm -hmm. every season comes with things you love about that season and maybe don't. You know, we love the flowers in the spring. We hate the allergies. You know, we love the vacations in the summer. We hate the heat. But this is a season. So I have done my very best every day to just think, what do I love about this season? And that is not negating. As you have seen from my post, I will be very honest about all the struggles. But I also have learned to love love the, the snuggles and the sweet moments of this season. This was absolutely invaluable because... We never know what to expect, and from women like you, we can really get a good understanding. It was so wonderful to chat with you, Kelly, and I'm so grateful. If anyone is looking to connect with Kelly, has more questions, you just want a little bit of support, check out the links in the show notes. First of all, for all the amazing products and articles and websites that she mentioned, but then also to connect with her, um, because I'll put all of your links in the show notes, Kelly. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And twin multiple mamas out there. Good luck. We got this. You're a superhero. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode and leave a review on Apple Podcasts so I know how to better serve you. I'd also love for you to join our community of Mamas in Training on Facebook. You can find me at Mamas in Training on Instagram and at mamasintraining.com. For Mamas in Training, I'm Jessica Lorian. We're in this together.